Well, hello, Pray and Share Warriors. I am always a little bit late, but I'm a little bit early tonight because we're in the midst of a storm. So I'm going to get off of here as quickly as I can tonight. But I want to talk to you about um, the words that God woke me up with this morning was, Yes, Jesus loves me. But it's more than me. He loves us all. He, Jesus loves us all. So I wanted to talk to you about that. Wanted to read some scripture and uh, maybe do a really short salvation message tonight. Yep, I don't know what my thing is. Oh, there it is. I think this storm is supposed to really hit at 7, so my, my computer is not plugged in. My phone is plugged into my computer, which is... Uh, so if I lose either Facebook or YouTube, you'll know that we lost power. Okay, so let's jump into prayer. Whoops. All right. Yeah, it's still going. Okay, let's jump into prayer. God, we just come to you and we just thank you, God, for um, the blessing of rain that you keep breathing, bringing us. We just pray that these storms will not be bad, that you will, that they will just bring rain and some thunder and lightning, God. We just pray for your protection. God, we thank you because we can bring all things before you, the small things, the medium things and the big things, God, and we just thank you for that. We thank you for sending your son to die for us out of a tremendous love that we can probably never comprehend. God, we just uh, we just pray for the lost. We just pray that you would open their eyes and their ears to the truth, that you would allow the Holy Spirit to uh, draw them to Jesus so they could be saved. And we pray for the prodigals to come home. We pray for them to repent and to return. God, we just thank you and praise you for all that you are and for all that you do. You are the great Jehovah. You are the great I Am. God, you are from everlasting to everlasting, and you are our everlasting Father. We just thank you for creating us, for being our protector, our provider, our sustainer, and for healing us, and for being our shelter in the storm, for protecting us in the storm, God. We just uh, we pray for all these children that are coming from these other countries, God, that they will be well taken care of. And I'm just praying, God, that they will be returned to their families soon. God, we just pray for um, your will in all these situations. So we just lay all these things at your feet according to your will. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, so... Um, I shared a song, but I wanted to show you my t-shirt. This is a Women of Faith t-shirt. Uh, which girl does Jesus love? And it's a big question mark. And it's Women of Faith. Anyway, I'll have to stand up so this other camera can see it. Anyway. It's my Women of Faith t-shirt that I've had for a long time. I'm on top of all my cords over here. I've got got cords to two computers over here. I had three this weekend, but uh-oh. I'm just knocking things off my desk. Having an earthquake. It's not an earthquake. It's just that when I hit my desk, everything moves, okay? It's not an earthquake. It looks like an earthquake, but it's really not. Okay, well, let's, let's read what I wrote on Facebook first. So I shared the song uh, Jesus Loves Me by Chris Tomlin, which is one of my favorite songs. And uh, I put, Yes, Jesus Loves Me were the words I heard this morning. I sometimes can't figure out why Jesus loves me. I feel most of the time that I do not deserve this unconditional love. I am thankful and grateful to be called to God's kingdom through Jesus. I love this song and message by Chris Tomlin. The lyrics are so true. So this actual video, um, the music's not mine. 
Um, the Holy Spirit and I picked out the pictures and I matched the lyrics to them, but I don't own anything. I don't own the pictures. I don't know. Sometimes I throw in my own pictures, but anyway, I just wanted to say that I don't claim anything, but I did put this together so I could learn the lyrics. So my U version verse today was 1 John 4.4, 4, but I read all of 1 John 4, uh, which I really love 1 John, 2 John, and 3 John. I may do a study on them. I really believe that if people knew how much Jesus loves them, they would not reject him. The love and forgiveness is best demonstrated on the cross when he, looking down at the people that hated him so much, had beat him nearly to death, nailed him to the cruel cross, but yet he asked God to forgive them. No other love compares. He went willingly also and laid down his life because of his tremendous love. Is Jesus your Savior today? If not, call upon the name of Jesus and be saved now. Jesus is the only path to heaven and forgiveness of sin. Time is short. The time is now to turn back to the one true God. God wants none to perish. John 3, 16 through 21. Call upon the name of Jesus and be saved today. Okay, so that is what I wrote on Facebook. Well, not this morning because I was doing things this afternoon that I normally do in the morning. Because I just, I don't know, I couldn't get it together today. Um, woke up really sleepy even though um, I slept pretty good last night. Okay, so 1 John 4 says this. It talks a lot about love. It says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into this world. You know, I, I think that is applicable right now. There are very many false prophets that are not teaching and preaching from the Word. They're just, it's like... Well, this is my opinion. Well, this this is the truth. And so this is what we need to teach and preach out of. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses, confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. Well, that's a good way to um, decide whether they are a false prophet or not. Do they believe that Jesus came to the earth or not? And that Jesus came in the flesh and walked among the flesh? Do they believe that? I guess if they don't, you know, in God's eyes, according to God's word, they're false prophets. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is in the world. That spirit of Antichrist is in the world. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. That was my verse today. They are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of God, he that knoweth God heareth us, he that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and every one that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. In this was manifested the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. Herein is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us, and sent his Son to be the prop propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. No man hath seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in, in us, and his love is perfected in us. Hereby know we that we dwell in him, and he in us, because he hath given us of his spirit. 
You know, we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him and he in God. And we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear. Because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. If a man say, I love God, and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? And this commandment have we from him, that he who loveth God love his brother also. Okay, so it even got into brotherly and sisterly love, too. But Jesus, Jesus laid down his life for us out of a tremendous love. Because Jesus loves us. Yes, Jesus loves us all. That's what I, I titled this. Because Jesus is just not for the saved. Jesus came for the sick. And Jesus wants, Jesus wants the people that are stuck in sin. He wants them too. He doesn't cast them away. He wants them too. He wants them in the kingdom too. They have to repent of their sins. They can't bring their sins into a holy kingdom. Uh, God's kingdom is holy. There is no sin in God's kingdom. Okay, so I have about half battery on my computer. Okay, so let's go to Romans 5, 8. I'm probably not going to do very many verses because um, my battery will probably go pretty quick. Okay, 5, 8. But God commandeth, commandeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And I wanted to read also what Jesus said while he was on the cross. Um, and I'm not sure where it is. I might should have looked it up ahead of time. That might have been quite smart. But I didn't. there either must be in Luke it may be in John that's scary it's a lightning and thundering here yes it's in Luke 34 and when they were come to the place which is called Calvary not cavalry Calvary. Calvary, there they crucified him, and the male factors, one on the right hand and the other on the left. That's the two thieves. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment. So, so Jesus himself looked upon the people, the very people that beat him, the very people that mocked him. The very people that since he as God knew in his heart that they hated him. You know, he knew he knew their hearts that they hated him in their minds that they had hate in their minds for him. But yet while he was on the cross, he was asking God to forgive them. That is a tremendous, tremendous love. I don't think I would be saying that on the cross. I think I would probably be screaming. But 
This is how Jesus felt. This is how Jesus feels now about everyone. He loves everyone the same. He loves the believers the same as he loves the unbelievers. Now that I have a hard time fathoming too. Because it looks like you would love people that are trying their hardest to do what you're asking them to do. And the ones that are working against your kingdom that you would not love them as much. But Jesus loves them as much as he loves God's children that are trying their best to follow what Jesus taught them. Because that's the level of love, of that unconditional love. The love that we have for our children is unconditional love. Yes, they disappoint us and oh, they make us mad. And sometimes we have to punish them. But we still love them. We still love them. That is how Jesus feels towards the people that hate him, the people that don't love him, the people that don't believe in him. He still loves them. And he still wants, he still wants them to come to him and to ask for forgiveness and to receive a new, a renewed life in him and through him. That is how much he loves us all. God himself doesn't want anyone to perish. That's in John 3.16. God sent Jesus to save the world. But much of the world has rejected Jesus or just thinks they have a tremendous amount of time to decide. And that's, that's not true either. So let's read another verse. Uh, let's see if we can find something else. Let's just read John 3.16 because we're close. And I actually like through 21 because it talks about also condemnation for people that do not believe. Because even though he loves everyone, there will be condemnation for people that do not believe and do not accept Jesus as their savior. So this is what John 3, 16 through 21 says. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And so 18 says, He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation that light has has that light has come into the world and men loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For every one that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought, W-R-O-U-G-H-T, not R-O-T, in God. So, God sent his son because he loves mankind. You know, God has tried so hard through the Bible to have a good relationship with mankind. He created Adam and Eve. They were deceived. Uh, Cain and Abel came along. Cain killed Abel. It's the first murder. Abraham came along. God made a covenant with Abraham. Uh, just 
over and over in the Bible with mankind. You know, um, the world got so bad that he had to destroy the world with Noah and only eight people were saved out of that. The world is bad now. We are, we are close to a Noah moment now. We are close to God. Destroying the world because of blatant sin, uh, greed, which is sin, blasphemy, people that, you know, blaspheme God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Wow, the rain is picking up now. I hope I don't get, if I get blown away, um, hopefully I'll get blown up to heaven. Anyway, um, not blown in a hospital somewhere. Okay, but anyway, this is the love of Jesus. Jesus loves. God loves. But he does not love sin. He never will love sin. He never will accept sin because God is holy and God hasn't changed his mind because it's 2021. What was sin in the Bible is still sin in the Bible. So if there's anything in the Bible that you're partaking in that is sin, then please repent. Please ask for forgiveness and walk away from it. It is not worth, it is not worth your salvation. It is not worth your eternal destination. It's just not worth it. It's just not. Does God love us in our sin? He loves us. He does not love our sin. It's a huge disappointment for him. He expects so much better from us than what we give him. So, um, step away from it. It is not worth it. So, I hope I demonstrated. hope I shared with you the love of Jesus. I'm going to share with you my notes from this morning. Well, this afternoon. Because I didn't do this until this afternoon. So good afternoon, God. Good afternoon, child. I brought you a new day of mercies and blessings. Another new day, child, to share my truths in the gospel of Jesus. Some rain to bless the grass and flowers of spring. And I think that's what he's doing right now. He's watering the, he's watering the, our part of the world. I don't know how far this goes. I think it goes up into the metroplex. But anyway, and far down south too. Um, I said thank you God for a new day of mercies and blessings new opportunities to share your truths in the gospel of Jesus the new day of blessings the new day of blessing for the grass and flowers of spring and he said child so much is taking place so keep your hand in the hand of Jesus Keep moving forward with Jesus, child, walking in his ways. Be aware of what is going on, but don't let it be your focus. Well, I haven't had time for it to be my focus, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to catch up tonight. Um, focus on me. Work for me today, child. Share my truths in the gospel of Jesus to all that you can. Many events will come. To, to plan against your government. Most planned, but outsiders, by outsiders. Countries are getting ready to attack your divided country. You know, I don't know whether any of you have read, I mean, have watched the Red Dawn movies. There's two. There's one in the 80s, and then there was a remake. Well, the first one was China. It was a China invasion second one was North Korea so our government is putting us in the perfect spot to be attacked because we are divided and not only that we are weakened our border is open to whoever you know our enemies could be coming across the border we don't know we don't know we have to trust God though I trust God I do not trust our government. I do not. I 
think they've made in the last three months they've made some of the worst decisions since I've been paying attention to politics the very worst decisions um, in okay countries are getting ready to attack your divided country with inside help oh inside help has set this fall up others are working against it too many like you are on their knees crying out for help too are we at the point of no return is a question many have only I know the point of no return and it is very close to that point many ask can you save our country God there is always hope through Jesus but your country has been doing evil and benefiting from doing evil for decades the evil has to end or win for a season there is no coexist of evil and good so I was talking about sin a while ago we can't we can't sin and think that it's okay with God because it's not so evil and good cannot coexist all good will soon be removed but all my children have to be unified under the banner of Jesus even the good is divided I see that too even uh, people that are on the side with God which I call the good side they're divided in their in what they believe and what they think you know there's division there too some of my children are clinging to the things of the world and their focus needs to shift back to me Jesus and the Holy Spirit they must be walking more in the light and not darkness. Well, we just read that a while ago. That um, the people that are condemned, that he will condemn, do not want to come to the light. They want to stay in the darkness. Um, anymore, my children need to walk uprightly with an upright heart. Yes, Jesus loves all, but all will not be permitted into heaven. Well, we just read that in John 3:16 through 21. There will be condemned. God doesn't want anyone to perish. God wants all to be in heaven, but people have free will, and they're going to choose. They're going to choose what they're going to choose. Um but they must turn away from the sins that separate them from me. I see all that you are saying clearly. I see it. I see and hear it all. I see it in their hearts. Their life is about them and not about you, God. They follow their wants instead of trusting you for their needs. God, thank you for meeting me late today. Because it was afternoon. I love you with my whole heart, soul, mind. And strength. Give my mama and daddy a hug, God. I love you too, my child. Now go be obedient to me in all I ask. Nothing is hidden from me. And in my perfect timing, all comes together at once. The reunion is soon, child, so be ready. Keep walking with Jesus and moving forward each day. The reunion will be spectacular. There is only peace, love, and joy here. And I sit there and offer oh, God. I'm ready for Jesus to come get us out of this crazy world. If it's not going to get better, if it's only going to get worse, I don't want to be here. But I know that we are on... Uh, we have been called to share the gospel with people until either we die or Jesus comes to get us. So I'm going to do a really short salvation thing tonight because the storm's kind of dying down. I still have battery on uh, 
my computer. So maybe I'll do a longer salvation. I really like this E band. I might have done it last night though. Hey, my friend Josie. My friend Josie is here. She's joined us. Is it raining at your house? Is it raining where you are? Okay, so this is the E band. Mm. There we are. Got to get the gold on both cameras. Okay. So, for I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is God's power for salvation to everyone who believes. Romans 1 16. So, this gold part of this E band, which I did not create, we got it from um, E3 Resources in Franklin, Tennessee. And it comes with a pamphlet, which is great. I can't remember what the colors stand for. The gold color represents God, the creator of all, who lives in heaven. Oops. Who lives in heaven. Uh, the Bible says that God is light, and in him there is no darkness. Again, we just got through reading that. Uh, God is perfect. God loves you, and he wants you. He wants to have a personal relationship with you. God is Jesus is God's Son, and the Bible says that Jesus and God are one. The dark color, wait a minute, I'll turn it this way. The dark color represents sin, which is doing wrong things. God says that all have sinned and fall short of God's standard of perfection. Sin separates us from God. The Bible says that the penalty for our sin is death or separation from God forever. So the first question mark is asking, how can your sins be removed so that you can know God? So let's move on to the red. Okay, the red color represents Jesus' blood. Jesus lived a perfect and sinless life, but he died on a cross to pay the penalty for all of our sin. Again, the payment for sin is death. So Jesus paid the penalty for each of us. Why? The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he sent his one and only Son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but will have everlasting life with God. The good news is that you don't have to be separated from God forever by sin. So that is the good news because of Jesus and what Jesus was willing to do for us. He's willing to go to the cross for us, which we talked about earlier. What tremendous love to lay down his life for everyone, not just the Christians, but for everyone, for all. You know, Jesus loves all. So the white uh, color represents each of us after our sins are washed away by Jesus. How can Jesus wash away our sins? When we believe in Jesus by following him, our sins are forgiven. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Romans 10:9. So the question mark is asking, have you accepted Jesus' gift of forgiveness by believing in him? We just had some thunder that rattled our windows. So let's pray. Let's pray. If you, if you have not received Jesus as your Savior, then let's pray. God, thank you for loving me. I confess that I have sinned against you. I believe that your son Jesus died on a cross to pay for my sins that, and that you raised Jesus from the dead.
I now put my faith only in Jesus to forgive me and save me from my sins. I confess that Jesus is Lord. Thank you for your your gift of eternal life. I pray in Jesus name. Amen. So then we have the green. The green is next. This is awkward. Okay, the green is next. The green color represents growth in your relationship with God. These symbols show the areas of growth. So we have the heart. We have the heart, which is the first symbol. We have the heart. Okay. The greatest commandment is that we love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and that we love our neighbors as ourselves. Love God, love people. And so the next one is the Bible. The symbol of the Bible. Read the Bible each day to learn more about God and His love. And then the next one is the praying guy. Pray to God constantly and share your thoughts, needs, and desires with Him. And then the next one is the water. When we are baptized, we are telling the world that we have committed our lives to Jesus and that we are a new person, like being born all over again. And then the next one is um, fellowship. Hang out with other Christians and encourage each other. Church is a good place to start. And then the next one is Share the good news that Jesus came, can forgive sins when you trust in Him. Tell as many people as you can. So if you sincerely meant that prayer, then thank, uh, welcome to the Kingdom Family of God. Your name is being written in the Lamb's Book of Life and the angels are rejoicing. You are now saved, sealed, and sanctified. Uh, by God through Jesus Christ his son so and if you read the Bible every day if you pray <laughs> excuse me if you pray and you praise then you're going to grow a closer relationship to God Jesus and the Holy Spirit oh sorry Oh, I need a drink of water. Okay. I had something on my face. Okay, so I think I came to do everything that God wanted me to do. I wanted to share with you the love of Jesus and how much He loves you. So please don't continue rejecting Him. If you didn't get saved tonight, then uh, by all means, think about it. Uh, pray to God. You know, ask God to reveal to you um, that He is real. And uh, just seek His face and He will show Himself to you. Alright, so um, this is a blessing from God. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make His face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. So we all need some peace. Peace is not overrated. So now we're going to pray. Um, Josie, do you have any prayer requests? My day was good. I, I didn't get a lot accomplished today, but tomorrow is a new day. <laughs> tomorrow is a new day. And it's not going to be raining tomorrow, so I'm going to go get more accomplished tomorrow. 
Hmm. I have hiccups. All right. Well, I am gonna pray, and uh, I think Josie is better, so we're gonna praise and um, just pray for our country. I think we're gonna cry out to God for our country. I need to do that more. Sometimes I see that we're too far gone, but only God knows if we're too far gone. Only God knows whether this country is too far gone or not. Because He knows every heart and every mind in it and all over the world. So let's pray. Okay. All right. Mr. Mike's cousin, is he sick? Okay, well, we'll pray. God, we just come to you, God, and we are so thankful. We're thankful for the blessings of rain, God. We are thankful for your protection. We are thankful for your provision, God. We are thankful that you sent your son to save us. Even while we were sinners, you sent Jesus to come and save us. That you love us and Jesus loves us and the Holy Spirit loves us. That we are so loved and that you love everyone the same, God. You love us all the same. God, I just pray for uh, Josie and for her sister and for her co-worker, Maria, God. I just pray for healing for them. I pray for Mr. Mike's cousin, God. Just pray for them. I pray for Mr. Mike that has been sick. I pray for all the boys, God, that um, you just help them to grow into um, young Christian men with the influence of Mr. Mike, God, that they would just grow closer and closer to you every day. And we just pray for, um, we praise you for the rain, God. We pray for our country, God. Only you know whether it is too far gone. You know all the corruption, God in our country you know all the bad and evil that goes on in our country god and you know all hearts and minds god only you know whether you are done with this country or not so god we cry out that you would save our country god we cry out for it we pray for people to get saved god we pray for a jesus movement that no one has ever seen or experienced. And God, we pray for that great revival. We pray to be that one church under the banner of Jesus, no matter what denomination, God, because there will be no denominations in heaven. So we pray to be that now. And God, we pray for uh, continued protection through this storm. And we pray, God, that um, you would open the eyes and the ears of the lost, God, that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so they can be saved. God, we just pray that you will help us to walk more in the Spirit every day and to just grow closer and closer to Jesus every day and to walk closer and closer to Him every day to reflect the light of Jesus, to reflect the compassion and the love of Jesus. To everyone that we meet or we see, God, help them to see something in us that they don't see in other people and help them draw them to want the light that comes from salvation through Jesus and the light that comes from the Holy Spirit. God, we just uh, thank you and we are grateful and we trust you with all that we have, God. And we know that you will take care of everything that that um, you have planned. Everything in your plans and your purposes, God, will come to fruition. And your timing, God, is always perfect. So just help us to wait for your perfect timing. 
And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Oh, your family, for Josie's family also, God, and, and for her grandchildren, God, we just pray for blessings and protection and provision. We just pray that you would keep them well. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, okay, well, my friend, i got to get off of here. My, my phone is dying and my computer is dying. Because I unplugged my computer a while ago when that storm hit. So, um, are y'all experiencing storms? Is it raining where you are? a little bit of a delay oh my family's doing great they're doing good I already fed Seth so I don't have to go do that but I've got to go and do other things I'm gonna wait until the storm blows through and then I'm gonna do my dishes I don't like to run water when it's lightning you're not sure if it's storming oh you haven't looked outside well you can hear it <laughs> believe me you, you don't have to look outside you can hear it if it is because it's pretty loud it's pretty loud it was shaking my windows while ago the thunder was but um, I guess we need the rain I don't mind the rain I don't like the threat of tornadoes. I don't like that. Alright, love y'all. Have a have a good evening and uh, awesome tomorrow. I hope to get more accomplished tomorrow than I did today. Oh, you heard it earlier? Alright, well... God bless you all and your families abundantly and much love. I might get good at this someday, but I doubt it. Much love and cyber hugs and good night.